Ms. Nanda Rao, uh, she comes with 13 years of experience in education field and has been the coordinator for 10 years. Uh, she's currently working in DPS Bangalore North as coordinator and uh, teacher for Upper KG. Uh, she uh, comes with uh, huge experience and uh, she loves teaching. She has done her specialization in pre-primary teacher's training. Ms. Niyodita Thapa, she has done her master's in microbiology from uh, Bangalore University and uh, she was awarded the third rank in the university. Initially, she was working as a microbiologist, but after her child was born, her focus shifted to more about uh, child development and psychology. And then she did her Montessori training to understand things better and join the education field. But that's when she knew that's her true calling because uh, she fell in love with children and she wanted to continue in the field of education. She entered the profession. She joined DPS as a kindergarten teacher and within a span of four years, she's become the coordinator. She believes in quality rather than quantity. And her rich experience and learning over the years have helped her become who she is today. But she feels she has a long way to go. Welcome, Ms. Thapa and Ms. Rao. Have a wonderful Thank session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for the introduction. Hello. Um, Can I play the video, ma'am, whenever you? Uh, one second, yeah. I will first uh, share my PPT. Seema, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Very clear. Okay. Fine. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Um, so thank you once again. It's been a, it's a pleasure to have to be in a, such an esteemed uh, uh, company of the participants. Um, uh, 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 so today is, uh, we are trying to cover most of the macro and in the micro level too uh, about the best practices in the pre-primary. Um, uh, uh, so uh, our uh, topic being best practice in pre-primary, I would uh, first uh, um, uh, request you to play the video on uh, brain development in uh, children from uh, birth onwards uh, in their early childhood age. Can all see the screen? Yes. Yes, yes ma'am, we can. Yeah. Child's experiences during the earliest years of life have a lasting impact on the architecture of the developing brain. What happened? Yes, we can hear it. The basic blueprint, but experiences shape the process that determines whether a child's brain will provide a strong or weak foundation for all future learning behavior. No, the audio is not the uh, foundation of brain architecture. Circuits and connections proliferate at a rapid pace and are reinforced through repeated use. Our experiences and environment dictate which circuits and connections get more use. Connections that are used more grow stronger. Yes, we use them. Connections that are used less fade away through a normal process called pruning. Well used circuits create lightning fast pathways for neural signals to travel across regions of the brain. Simple circuits form first, providing a foundation for more complex circuits to build on later. Through this process, neurons form strong circuits and connections for emotions, motor skills, behavioral control, logic, language, and memory during the early critical period of development. With repeated use, these circuits become more efficient and connect to other areas of the brain more rapidly. While they originate in specific areas of the brain, the circuits are interconnected. You can't have one type of skill without the others to support it. Like building a house, everything is connected, and what comes first forms a foundation for all that comes later. Uh, thank you. Thanks for the video. Thanks for playing it. 
um so we see from this video how important it is to make the brain mm-hmm. connections very early in uh, the child's um, in the childhood um so the um the uh, so we see uh, so um uh, i'll you can share, share the ppt one second i'll just share the ppt one second yeah, yeah. uh so i'll hand over to niyodita she will explain uh, the cognitive stages of childhood development have you, have you shared the ppt ma'am yeah okay you can see the screen uh no, no? we are not taking one second one second one second i'm so sorry i'm going to can see now no ma'am can see now yeah i'm sharing the uh... no ma'am no ma'am i'm not sharing the screen i'm i i'm sharing one yes, second yes yes like the way you said shared yesterday yeah i did can you see uh, new no can you see now no But shall i uh shall I'm i share it? it yeah do it okay i'm i'm sharing it okay can okay. you see it now can you see one second yeah yes ma'am yes yes yeah. thank you thank you so much Yes. Can you see now, Niyodita? Yes, yes. ma'am. We can see. I shared it. Okay. So, uh, yes. For confirmation, can you hear me, Sima? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Uh, so, sorry for the video. The audio was little low. but uh, the point is development of a child right from embryonic stage is a planned one with precision the child is born without much abilities he or she acquires these abilities over a period of time they develop adapt and get conditioned to various physical social and cultural surrounding now the cognitive stages of childhood development as identified by jean peget are sensory motor stage that is from birth to 2 years here the children learn with their senses next is pre operational stage that is ages 2 through 7 now during this stage the children develop memory and imagination and they start connecting past to future earliest years spent in nurturing surroundings promote optimal brain growth which creates the foundation for which later skills and abilities develop so when these years lay the foundation of crucial developmental stages we cannot ignore them now with these understandings a good practice is to develop activities which are age appropriate and fulfill the expected needs as nep has listed ecca up to grade 2 the methodology of teaching and learning will extend up to grade 2 with gradual progression over to you ma'am uh so when we say the best practices uh what do we mean by it uh we will try and cover both at the macro level and in the but in the micro level how a uh, curriculum should look like and how the school should uh, be uh, uh, in uh, respect of infrastructure and uh, other things so uh, before that we would just like to uh, mention a few methods of preschool learning um yeah, uh, in, yeah. no ma'am continue yeah one second um i would quickly like to um, uh, uh, mention a few methods of uh, kindergarten uh, uh, preschool learning uh, reggio emilia this word comes from an italian village it's named after an italian village where it says um, uh, all the at the, the core uh, of this philosophy is on the assumption that children form their own personalities during early years they are endowed with hundreds hundred languages through which they can express their ideas uh, hundred symbolic languages are painting sculpting um, uh, free hand uh, drawing uh, role play in everyday life and um, this is how uh, this is the basic philosophy of uh, reggio emilia and uh, one more um, popular is uh, waldorf method of uh, uh, preschool uh, here children are encouraged uh, to take part in meaningful work like gardening cooking and other practical experience um, and children are not introduced to any of the academic concepts uh, in the early years uh, then we have a very popular uh, teaching methodology of montessori uh, 
uh, here uh, this also again developed by an italian the teaching is based on the uh, belief that um, children are naturally eager for knowledge and capable of initiating learning in a sufficiently supportive and well prepared learning environment uh, so uh, and the um, one more popular method is leve method in this uh, method uh, the focus is uh, both on subjective and emotional development of child all learning happens through play activity based learning uh, it encourages uh, expression and creative skills among children uh, so whatever uh, method uh, any preschool may adapt the bottom line is that the children are in the center and uh, all the methods uh, will uh, cater to the uh, cater to um, the child's um, um, uh, early brain development and connections that is to be made so after this we come to uh, what are the essential in indicators of quality preschool process um, first of all the uh, school should have uh, uh, since the um, uh, the, uh, the uh, teacher centric it's i mean the teacher has to uh, provide the necessary uh, experiences to the children uh, so the, the children have to build a very positive relationship with teachers uh, so that they are free to express and be stress free in the school environment Uh, then uh, as an infrastructure the room should be well equipped with sufficient materials all around them so that children have uh, the choice of uh, activity they uh, wish to take on then um, there are so uh, uh, pre schools where uh, in the traditional pre schools uh, children are made to uh, put a finger on the lip and sit down that just doesn't work and the communication is the key and the children have to be uh, listened to and spoken to and uh, uh, between the peer group and with the uh, adults around them uh, so that the communication is open uh, throughout um, uh, there should be ample opportunity for children to have arts and music uh, movement um, uh, then there is um, block play sand board sand play water play uh, role plays and um, all these uh, experiences have to be given to the children and uh, in all of this the parents uh, should be taken as uh, the um, uh, uh, to be involved in with the teach, uh, teachers so that they have the positive um, uh, impression about uh, they uh, they have the confidence that the child is doing the teachers the adults are doing uh, in the preschool are doing the best for their children and uh, what would be the essential indicators of a quality preschool uh, regarding the infrastructure in uh, the in a especially in a preschool uh, the children need lot of uh, special attention so uh, the it is better to have a low, lower class sizes uh, um, roughly like one adult is to 10 uh, children or sometimes not not more than 25 uh, so that every child gets uh, attention in the school, in the uh, classroom uh, situation then the teachers are the key so they should be well trained and they should be very passionate about their uh, teaching it is not like a job um, so they have to be passion with uh, and have lot of patience um, and they should have enjoy their time with the children um, so all staff are supervised uh, they should have ample opportunity for growth so that they give their best to the children uh, then we come what is most important for children Uh, in uh, any preschool setup children are, should be respected and nurtured and challenged as in uh, the adults around them should uh, restrain from making personal comments or uh, observation about the child loudly in front of the children or uh, because children are very very sensitive and they sense whatever is being uh, spoken to and they sense the mood of this class so uh, it is very uh, crucial that uh, they should be nurtured well and uh, they should be respected uh, like any other person in the uh, school now uh, children have uh, to be given uh, ample opportunities to learn important skills uh, they should be able to make small decisions meaningful decisions as to what activity they would like to pick up on a particular given day and uh, um, uh, in 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 uh, in a uh, in a restricted way but then uh, they should have uh, a choice of make um, making choices of what they want to have an activity with uh, the children's uh, language and uh, culture should be resp uh, respected uh, as in um, uh, the storytelling or songs or whatever is done uh, the child comes with his mother tongue uh, with his her, ma her mother tongue so that should be um, uh, respected at all times and the teacher should be able to communicate with children even with uh, 
uh, with uh, uh, communicate with children even when she is unable to speak the child's language but the communication has to be open with the children and um, uh, the, the, there should be always the indigenous uh, examples the stories to be given um, uh, the jack and jill stories don't work because the children cannot relate to such things they should be very uh, Uh, indigenous and uh, the, the children can relate to in uh, around uh, in the circumstances around them. Um, then uh, they have to be given ample opportunities. This is the best way to have in preschool where children can get opportunity to, to mingle with their small groups and with the larger groups of children, and uh, uh, um, and side by side with all that uh, some. Oh, ma'am, they will talk. Yeah, no. Yeah, you're looking very. some amount of academic um, uh, kindly unmute ma'am mrs nandara we request you to unmute yes you can yeah. hear me now yes yes we can okay. for how long was i unmuted i didn't realize uh, one few seconds yes few one seconds. minute one minute okay okay yeah Uh, so i was saying about the uh, academic skills that also has to be imparted along with other activities since we are reading the children for the next academic um, uh, years so uh, when the child goes to the next level of schooling they should have enough confidence um, and readiness to move to the next level um, so uh, uh, key in all this is to um, make use of the child's natural curiosity and that should be the motivating factor whenever a concept is presented to the child um, uh, the uh, curiosity to learn more should come in the child and not just what the teacher has told in the class you know uh, the the way things are to uh, given to the child uh, they they would want to learn more about it uh, so the yeah so when we say about all of these there will be like hundreds of things that children need to do in the class but then there is always a problem of time so how do we do that um, uh, so uh, neodita is going to explain that now uh, can you change the slide i'm not able to i slide i will change i change can you see now the next slide i'm not able to see the time table one you can't oh, see i'm no we are not able to see that we can we can see we can, we can see. see okay maybe it is frozen for me uh, yeah. how do how do i see it you have to stop uh, you have to log out and log in again please in case of network issues okay now i can see yeah done uh, yeah so uh, we saw that a uh, good practice provide ample opportunities for a child to explore and learn but to bring them into practice one must organize them meticulously so with school having many classes they need to share the resources therefore a time table can help incorporate all the activities in a very organized way the activities spread throughout the week will bring variety and the children will look forward to it school should have a very good balance of outdoor and indoor activities outdoor can be guided freely Either of it, both of it are beneficial for the children. And indoor activity, there is a wide array of indoor activities such as play doh, free hand drawing, etc. Now story time. Story time. Storytelling has always been a powerful tool. Therefore, story time must be given a lot of importance. Now you would have seen some children have stronger musical intelligence. Hence, they learn through songs and rhymes. Making music using some simple tools can be therapeutic as well. and play what a play not only allow the child to play in a very stress free environment but helps in developing motor skills social interaction and creative expressions the art activities it could be two dimensional three dimensional form of art that helps to bring out the creative thinking in a child role play storytelling apart from building language it also boosts boosts child self confidence Now, the experimental ways of doing things like cooking, gardening, help them observe, help them absorb, explore, and learn from their experiences. A nature walk. It not only helps to take a break from the class setup, but also helps the child to appreciate the nuances of nature. Next slide. Yes. So we saw how a preschool is child-centric. teacher driven but one important fact to bring into picture for a very successful implementation of preschool program would be parents and families 
Now, if parents are excited to be the partners, they will understand the school's approach and their participation will help child both at school as well as at home. School can have provisions where parents can observe and participate in the ongoing activities. It means the process of learning is transparent. Periodic orientation help parents from all backgrounds understand the correct approach to child's learning and sharing child's progress help them understand how they can help the child in collaboration with the teacher. So, sorry, I'm just getting some pop up message. Are you able to hear me? Yeah, your voice is breaking a bit, but then yeah, I can, you can hear. Your uh, voice is cracking, ma'am. Okay. Because of the network, the network issue, the voice uh, is cracking. Shall I change? Okay, I can just finish this site. Yeah. Mm. Can you hear me now? No, ma'am. No. No. Okay, one second. Uh, Ms. Nanda Rao, please, if you can please uh, can take this over before we, um, when uh, Niyorita ma'am uh, settles with her network. Uh, I'm sorry? Uh, you can please take over this. Uh, may, meanwhile, yeah, Niyorita yeah. Thapa ma'am is taking, uh, taking care of a network. Okay, okay, okay. I'll, I'll continue. Okay, what is most important for the teachers, uh, curriculum and classroom? We'll just see in a few points. Um, uh, teachers should have at least a minimum degree of college degree and uh, they should be uh, uh, de definitely trained in early childhood education. Um, uh, um, uh, we have this strong notion that uh, any child can be taught, it's just A, B, C, D and 1, 2, 3. Any, anybody can uh, take up, this is not like that. So we uh, have sometimes a lot of applications coming in where there are MBAs, doctors uh, who would want to change their profession. but. Uh, uh, the uh, the minimum training of early childhood education is a must in any person who would uh, want to take up this, along with passion to uh, uh, teach the children. Um, uh, teachers should have uh, meaningful interactions with children. Um, uh, teachers, uh, 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 apart from that, they need to um, uh, impart mathematical and reading, writing through projects, um, uh, collaborative learning, children should be able to mingle with other children and um, uh, an active curriculum should be uh, 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 very, is very important. Teachers um, have to monitor the child's progress regularly. It should always be a formative assessment um, uh, because uh, the child uh, learns in his or her own pace. So there cannot be one standard uh, expectation from any child. So every child should be allowed to um, progress in their own way, own way but that they should be, um, uh, should be seen that progress is happening and um, the curriculum has to be tweaked uh, wherever it's required. Uh, um, then uh, teachers refer children who may have uh, any learning uh, the, the, uh, problems or learning problems come up, they should be able to diagnose it, they should be able to see it and then um, uh, refer them to the school counselors or uh, tweak the syllabus in such a way, or curriculum such a way that the child is able to gain uh, out of it. Um, uh, the, change the method of teaching, uh, the way the child understands. So anything which is present to the child, uh, the way he or she understands will definitely make the child to learn. And um, uh, uh, professional development for teachers is the um, uh, um, uh, most important thing because uh, with changing technologies and uh, new learning methodologies uh, being presented, uh, teachers should be um, uh, absolutely updated with whatever is going on in all the topics, uh, be it um, um, training in terms of storytelling or the song and dance or uh, technology or wherever it's required, uh, proper uh, professional so, development has sorry, to happen. So, yes, you are back, uh, Neodita. Sorry to interrupt. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes, we Even can hear you. Even your audio was not clear. We can hear you. Yeah, I can speak, Neodita. Okay. I am on this slide so here. Where, where, where are you? Uh, uh, just uh, uh, the second line, the second line of um, yeah. um, slide. So yeah, fine, uh, yes. Sorry, sorry. I, uh, because the uh, Zoom has exceeded 500, so it was not even allowing me actually. Uh, so thank you so much. Uh, and then moving on from the families to teachers' curriculum and classrooms. Now for a good practice to be employed in a preschool, teachers have many job roles. Therefore, her qualification and training will help to comprehend these roles better. Now, having a meaningful interaction with children will create a stronger bond between the teacher and the child. They will build emotions like trust, 
failed and will view the teacher as a person to confide in. Now, through proper planning and preparation, learning can be made as joyful as possible. That is up to the teachers. Now, under certain circumstances, teachers will refer children who have special learning needs. Now, with good support system from school and parents, uh, uh, we can all work together to assess, to diagnose, and come up with a plan specifically made for the child. We do that in our school. Uh, second point, uh, the other thing is, why do teachers need to be provided with professional development program? Now, because apart from sharpening your own skill sets, these help in shifting the biases, attitudes, and perceptions. Now, free updation, updation with, uh, in terms of knowledge or computers is the only key to work with the 21st century children. Now, teachers' respectful behavior towards parents and staff also create a very healthy environment to work. We all know that. Now, we got to curriculum. Keeping the learning outcomes in mind, lesson plans should be created, executed, assessment to be done in a very formative and continuous mode, Reflection has to be made by the teacher in terms of activity or her own approach and changes or adjustments have to be made wherever necessary. Now, Sorry to interrupt. In classroom, yes. Uh, Ms. Thapa, uh, your voice is not audible to many participants. Not audible? Okay, yes. I will just try removing the headset once again. Thank you. Yes, can you hear me now? Yes, yes, no, much, much better. Yeah. Much better? Okay. Maybe uh, you're done with this. This, this, this slide is uh, done, no? We will change the slide, no? Yes. So the classrooms are like incubators and uh, it should be treated as incubators where the growth takes place. Yeah, over to ma'am. Yeah. Next slide. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, the most important skill in pre primary are the social and emotional development skills of the child. The child should be encouraged to uh, mingle with other children, greet in the morning, um, uh, uh, greet his peer group, his teachers, uh, with his or her teachers, uh, anybody who walks into the classroom, this habit has to be inculcated so that the child develops emotionally and uh, socially. Um, should know how to mingle with other children, how to resolve the issues, uh, resolve his um, um, uh, fights with peer groups, and um, um, the, uh, uh, and all those things comes from the very early age. Um, then we have a uh, 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 teacher being the role model. Uh, this is, uh, uh, I am sure every kindergarten teacher or any teacher for that matter would uh, relate to because the child very closely emulates the teacher and uh, um, observes each and every gesture of the uh, teacher the way she dresses up, the way she speaks, the way she conducts herself, um, her, conduct, her conduct with other people, uh, with her peer group, with, her, uh, with other adults and with the children. Um, uh, uh, I'm sure everybody as a, teacher, as a teacher would have experienced this when the PTM happens. You get to know um, more about your personality from the parents where the children have gone and told the parents how the teacher, what, how the, how, what are her mannerisms. You get to learn a lot from the uh, from them uh, when uh, through their observation. So um, the teacher just cannot uh, ask the children to um, uh, behave themselves or how to speak. She has to herself um, show it through her mannerisms. Her body language is emulated. Um, everything is uh, observed very keenly by children, and it passes on to them. Uh, if the teacher is tensed or if she is. Uh, uh, edgy, or if she is uh, if she is uh, stressed and on any particular day, that's very much sensed by the children, and uh, they can even ask you how um, uh, how are you, ma'am, today not looking well and all that. So we know how closely they observe us. So we have to be role models to the children and uh, be cautious all the time how we conduct ourselves. Um, then uh, we come to reading is the most important uh, thing in the preschool, any preschool. They say the day must end with teachers reading to their students, but of course uh, they, the day can also begin with uh, reading to their students where the children calm down and listen and their creative uh, mind starts working uh, when they go into the world of reading. Uh, storytelling, the world of way, what is the world of way of storytelling? It's just not reading from a book, but connecting the children from eye to eye and heart to heart, where the teacher narrates with passion any story. Any story.
story which is narrated through the heart passionately with children the same story even if it is repeated a hundred times the children will still love to hear it from the teacher from every day uh, their imagination is working and uh, children are imagining the story uh, to themselves so uh, that's how the world of way of teach, uh, uh, storytelling works um then um over to neodita yeah okay i think i'll take up the slide myself uh, new are you ready yes can you hear me yes you are you are on two different systems ma'am yes yes i have uh, now logged into the mobile because the laptop is not working now can you hear me they yes. won't yes yes you can continue yes okay fine so now the uh, practice with purpose it means we saw how simple things can have deeper impacts on child's development to meet the specific objectives of the preschool focus also should be there on meeting the expected learning outcomes of literacy and numeracy and uh, note that most of the developmental activities must run parallel to meet the different learning styles of children sensorial development motor skills are the building blocks to the brain's pathways which later lead to complex learning tasks language development revolves around the lsrw skills the examples of activities which promote language development directly or indirectly include <coughs> storytelling poetry rhymes and songs dramas role play puppetry games such as dumb charades tongue twisters exchange of ideas general conversation around a theme or after the story during the circle time now all of these lead to multiple learning outcomes such as vocabulary building enhancing listening skill poems and rhymes help in repetition which enhances memory action songs and movements help in kinesthetic development stories gather information sequence them create imagination which help in create creative thinking now the role plays puppetry and stories are the excellent medium to inculcate values and life skills questions reflection around the story or activity also help to build higher order thinking capacities next slide now all these activities can be extended to other concepts of numeracy too but understanding the mathematical concept through the real life application will take away the fear of mathematics from children associating symbols to values that is abstract to concrete now games puzzles hand on activities regular board games diy games all can be used to add fun in mathematics and complexity can increase as they master each level now in terms of general awareness can actually be given a free hand where hands on activities can be widely used the themes can go across various disciplines that is interdisciplinary for example now if the topic is insect the different types of insect can be listed counted compared in terms of big and small sizes now in literacy a story can be created woven around the insects art integration can happen beautifully in all areas visual arts performing arts and teaching rhymes and songs in different languages help them to appreciate different languages and cultural diversity now about cultural to bring about cultural awareness celebrating festivals important events they bring out the essence of our cultural heritage and sense of patriotism next slide please yes now a preschool with as you have seen all the good practices that are in place have an additional role to play towards one's community supporting fellow professions taking mentorships fostering sharing cultures within and outside the school sharing information with parents will help build a strong community of teachers in the society next slide please yeah here we are sharing you you are muted now neo you are muted yeah okay can you hear me yeah yes so sharing here again mute it's mute again Why is it getting muted i'm unmuting myself okay yes yeah, so sharing hear here the glimpses of the activities done uh Uh, during this pandemic by our children as you can see most of the uh, activities are hands on they're very colorful they're very vibrant and uh, the children have used recycled items and whatever resources were available at home now as you can go through the pictures the child is actually generating secondary colors from primary colors so we need not teach them colors he can experiment and find out for himself
Now, when the children have learned learned a uh, few shapes, they can make construct a figure out of it. Now, this gives them an idea that shapes, when put together, create something, and everything is made of some shape. Raki making activities, significance of a festival. Now, you can see that your child is uh, uh, he's uh, the, this is a lacing and sequence of the numbers, so an activity which covers both. Then we created a lot of DIY board games uh, for the introduction of concept of tens and ones and reinforcement of that. And the uh, things that were used, uh, if there are no ice cream sticks at home, the child can use anything, pebbles, sticks, uh, the pistachio sh shells. So all that material can be used. The, uh, crea the creation of the dolls using Play-Doh and uh, recycled items, the cardboards and the blocks that are available there at home. And the children have used the space at home to, you know, reinforce the ideas. And uh, as you can see, sowing the seeds and uh, observing the germination of a plant is an experiment in itself, where the child learns to be patient, taking care of the plants and natures comes by itself. So uh, with uh, all these, it truly shows that learning can happen anywhere, anytime. Uh, with this note, uh, we come to an end of our topic for today, best practices in preschool. Thank you for giving us this opportunity. Uh, I pass on to ma'am for an ending note. Yeah, uh, having said on the micro level and the macro level, how the school should look like and what the content that goes into the activities. Um, here's a note of caution for the adults. Uh, the child is like a seed. Uh, I wouldn't coax the plant if I were you. Such watchful nurturing may do it harm. Let the soil rest and wait until it is dry before you water it. The leaves incline to find its own direction. Give it a chance to seek the sunlight for itself. Much growth is stunted by too careful prodding, too much eagerness. The things we love, we leave alone. Thank you on this note. Thank you. And we just show the references from where we got the material from. Um, then uh, thank you so much. Thanks for this opportunity to present our uh, thoughts. Uh, yes, we would like to take questions. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, participants of feedback, uh, attendance come feedback form has been shared in the chat box. Uh, do uh, fill that up. Uh, E-certificates will be issued upon the entry of this attendance sheet. Uh, so for every webinar that you attend, uh, E-certificate will be issued. So please uh, ensure you write your name properly. Your email ID has to be uh, correct. If there is any, any spelling error, then you will uh, end up not receiving the certificate or you will have a wrong, uh, uh, you will have a mistake in your uh, certificate, which will not be able to correct. So ensure you are entering your uh, data is very, very right. And do a double check before even submitting the uh, form. Thank you so much. Uh, Veda ma'am, you can stop the share. Yeah. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. Uh, Ma'am, before we could end up, can we have any uh, questions if it is there? We have some questions in the chat box. So before I could just uh, post it to okay. Nanda Rao or Miss Nanda Rao or uh, Miss Papa. I could, uh, if I, if we, if we have anybody from the participants, if you have any questions, you can just please raise up. Okay, by the time the teachers will volunteer, I would like to ask, there is a question from the participants. They ask... Uh, like, how do you think parents can be involved in this creative way of uh, learning? So whatever the creative way of learning was given by you both the presentation, they just want to know, how can the parents be involved? Okay. Uh, Neodita, can I take this question? Yes, yes, sure. Yeah. Uh, so um, 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 uh, I wouldn't say every school, most of the school, also not most of the school earlier, I think we used to see the parents as a barrier in our thing, you know, interfering, they interfere and stuff like that. But the concept has changed completely. And when we take the uh, parents into confidence, uh, it will create a more, a more congenial atmosphere in the school where uh, they are partners in ch ch their children's learning and they'll cooperate their best. So um, now what we could do is uh, in how, uh, this is how we do in our school, that um, some activities are passed on to home, like if there is a show and tell, uh, the parents will, um, the parents take uh, extreme, um, uh, um, uh, this one, interest in uh, training their children. Uh, and uh, we um, uh, tell, we give instructions on how to make um, 
uh, rakhi or any other um, uh, how to decorate a um, um, uh, diwali diya or how to decorate a christmas tree and uh, they, they get it done sometimes we are surprised to see that they are more uh, uh, creative and they have better artistic sense than the teacher would have uh, so that comes as a surprise uh so this is how we can uh, um, uh, pass, uh, pass some of the work can be shared by uh, teacher uh, parents at home uh, when activities are given i hope that answers the question yes ma'am i think it was really very clear and uh, you know uh, smooth the clarity was given completely to the uh, participant ma'am we yes, have thank you. uh coming to the you know uh, timing uh, time management there is a question how can we manage these many activities with that uh, small span of uh, time so is uh, uh, you know uh, take it up please exactly that's the horror of every teacher she wants to put in a lot of things in uh, new this i want to take on this question Uh, yeah so yes uh, it has been a concern for uh, as ma'am said uh, for everybody time is a big uh, this thing constraint but as i said having a time table and because we have to share resources in the school so you know you can you need not have all the activities in a day it is not necessary see uh, it's a process of you know 3 years so we can you know do uh, little things at a time and uh, do it effectively the important thing is the uh, sometimes what happens we are piled up with so many things that we land up doing but not Uh, correctly in the correct way so uh, it is better to do one thing at a time but in a correct way and you know so that whatever we desired that uh, uh, you know purpose or the need is uh, fulfilled so you can have uh, uh, probably you know a time table is very important first and foremost and then you know you have to take stand on many things that earlier uh, uh, see the writing in lsrw skills listening speaking reading and writing now that the uh, nep has stressed upon expected level of you know literacy and reading skills specifically reading skills so which we felt that our children are uh, not reading en enough so you know uh, focusing on those trends you know speaking uh, skills conversations we used to focus more on maybe writing so you know there we have to take some stand that yes writing can go uh, eventually because sometimes we need to see the age of the child so if the, age, the child is not prepared his fine motor uh, fine motor skills are not developed he will not write so you know you forcing them to write is a waste of time so you know that time can be utilized to do other things which are develop uh, you know age appropriate developmental activities so we need to understand that and you know some things we may have to take a stand and we may have to put things at a little bay and then do the things that are much important and that are much fruitful and not do things for the sake of it. yes i i hope i could i was uh, able to help you ma'am yes yes ma'am thank you so much i think uh, uh, it was very uh, you know clear for the participant again once again i could say that ma'am as uh, we have one more question over here they say now the nep is coming up and uh, we can see that there's lot of changes especially in the pre primary so we go ahead with the same thing or do we need really need to look into any changes for the same or no. uh, they have the system will go smoothly or do we need to change our old way of uh, uh, learning process uh, it depends on what is what was the old way of uh, yes, doing yes. that <laughs> Uh, uh so we are always been doing uh, activity based in fact for the uh, general awareness we don't even have any uh, notebook we don't even have any worksheets made for that everything is hands on that uh, relieves the, the both the teachers and the children are happy doing that because they get to do things Mm, uh, hands on and the teacher doesn't have to worry about uh, whether the child has uh, understood or not because the child is doing it whatever little the child understand is good enough everybody learns uh, uh, at the different stages mm. so fine yeah, so I, uh, we should continue to uh, do the activities uh, as earlier because we completely do activity based uh, it has to be more um, uh, done in the first and second grade level um, uh, now rather than uh, earlier Uh, because a lot more activities have to be uh, done um, in the pre primary in the first grade and second grade where um, the, the teachers tend to do more of academics uh, rather than activities hmm. I, i would like just to uh, add whoever has asked the question so maybe there we can just do even in uh, pre primary or grade 1 and grade 2 collaborate collaboration between
between, uh, you know, now uh, more than subject, we can say, you know, between literacy, numeracy and general awareness, you can have a collaboration. Some topics which are very general, you can just take the topic and maybe, you know, you can uh, spread across. You did not, uh, you need not uh, demarcate a subject like this is only English and this is math and I need to, some uh, topics do repeat like uh, the colors, the, those are the basic things like colors and uh, shapes and uh, uh, many things uh, so those topics can be you know collaborated and that also saves a lot of time and uh, you know you can uh, come up with creative ideas for both which will cater to both the things so i think uh, collaboration also uh, can help in saving time and you know uh, uh, now thinking in a new way as uh, as said uh, yes changes have to be made if you as nanda ma'am pointed depends what you were doing before so if you're doing very academic oriented and it was only writing, so yes, things may have to change. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, it was really uh, very nice. Uh, ma'am, there is one more query. They're uh, asking about uh, the assessment. Uh, do you really need to uh, consider the assessment or is it uh, how, how the assessment would be in pre-primary level, ma'am? Uh, can I take the question, Neo? Yes, yes, ma'am, yes. please. So in the kindergarten, it's, we have to underline it with dark marking that it always has to be a formative assessment. It can never be a, a cumulative assessment where we just say this is what the child knows, that's it. Uh, it is always has to be an uh, ongoing assessment. Each and every interaction with the child is an assessment for the teacher as to so she can see the progress from how he was yesterday or how she was yesterday to how the child is going, um, uh, appears after a week or after even a month or after a year. So uh, uh, there are a lot of, um, uh, it's like we have to have a portfolio where the child is, um, if the child is doing fine, uh, then there is nothing to worry, we, we can see it there. But if some child is struggling with uh, age appropriate um, uh, um, activities, then we have to, yes, um, ongoing assessment has to be done. Each and like I said, every interaction with the child is an assessment. And uh, we are just telling this is what the child knows, this is where he has to take, uh, he or she has to uh, take on from here. Uh, so it has to be really um, formative. It has to uh, uh, assess and then teach assess and then help assess and then uh, uh, help the child to grow in that uh, whichever uh, area or leave the child alone for a while so that the um, age, um, uh, the child's readiness happens and the child will learn automatically when uh, uh, proper guidance is given uh, at proper uh, time, the child will eventually learn. There is nobody in this world who has not written or who has not read. Uh, eventually everybody does it, but the proper care and nurture in the beginning will definitely do it, happen, make it happen. Yes, yeah, I, I think uh, as uh, clearly mentioned by you, the assessment has to be taken in a very smooth way, which is really needed for everyone. And one more last very uh, uh, nice question, even I felt it, ma'am. Uh, as we have this pandemic situation and everyone is uh, becoming tech savvy and use of technology, and we also say that in that, uh, uh, what I can say, since situ ages, uh, you, uh, use of this mobiles and all this technology is not advisable. But now uh, they are, it, it's inevitable they are using it. So that's what they are asking. So whether writing will be there in future or uh, would it be, you know, uh, introducing children to typing as we have, uh, this will continue or do we really have uh, uh, any changes in that? What exactly I would, is I would, uh, <laughs> I would leave this question to Neodita because we have already <laughs> taken a very major decision regarding writing. Uh, yeah. Neodita can answer that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, I mean, that is very futuristic, uh, but uh, really, you cannot happen. See, pandemic itself was so unpredictable. So, you know, things cannot, ha we really can't predict what will happen. Uh, maybe, yes. And uh, many places, it has been shown that, you know, they are not writing any longer. So, you know, they are doing very good even without writing. But yes, writing has its own place and importance. We cannot uh, completely leave it. But uh, uh, we have to, again, you know, balance a very fine line of uh, this thing between uh, what to do and what not to do, what to leave behind and what to. So we can take it. But uh, yes, of course, I mean, I have seen many schools where they emphasize a lot on writing, where they emphasize a lot on, you know, whether the child is prepared or not, ready or not. They do that. So, you know, this that can be actually, you know, there we can put a, you know, pause, there we can think that, yes, no, this much is not required. Let the child, uh, you know, get it eventually. 
actually some children start writing by first second and grade three their handwriting becomes good and we are expecting them that to already happen in lkg or ukg so you know it is not appropriate to expect uh, so much out of a, a small child so yes he will do wonders in other areas so we our attention to now go into those areas so instead of only focusing in those uh, previous uh, ways of only writing or something like that so yes uh, typing i i think now uh, typing is also not required because everything is touch screen and smartphone so uh, and children are quite well versed with all that and if you're talking about screen time uh, uh, yes uh, we yeah. we really cannot avoid the screen time okay i i thought somebody was asking so um, yes screen time we cannot avoid it but uh, uh, utilizing that screen time for a good you know uh, resource for a good uh, the screen time instead of watching something which is not very appropriate or developmentally this thing can be replaced by something which is better so you know that kind of shift and that uh, i think we need to approach parents for it because screen time uh, problem is generally with the parents so we need to tell them that you know the child is watching this many minutes or hours in a day so why not utilize in a uh, use it as a resource actually use it as a you know positive thing yeah our videos what we are doing right now and ppts are not more than 3 minutes none of the uh, none of this is more than 3 minutes uh, uh, maximum the story uh, telling must have gone up to 4 or 5 minutes otherwise the concepts are all done within 3 minutes so we always tell the uh, parents to uh, they don't have to actually watch the screen they can even listen to and uh, learn the songs listen to the stories they don't have to see the screen they can uh, they can their uh, listening skills can also be developed by just listening to what the, um, the content is there in the videos that we are doing um uh, and of course uh, uh, only the and but the children are uh, definitely liking some teachers uh, um uh, pleasant demeanor to they see on the screen uh, otherwise they can listen to uh, the contents from the videos yes thank you so much ma'am i think balance between the technology and the uh, uh, usual uh, uh, 